Now that I've motivated uh, the transmission line example and why you need to use them, uh, what do I mean by a, a traveling electromagnetic wave? And this is going to become very interesting. Uh, it really blew my mind the first time I learned it. Um, it's energy, of course, that's traveling within the. It's it's energy that's traveling within the dielectric between the source and the load. And how you usually learn circuits is that well, it's not there's not energy traveling between these two. It's actually electrons, right, that are flowing down the line, and that those electrons make current. Isn't that the way it works? So if the electrons are going that way, the current's going this way. And no, that is not how it works. That's how it works in DC, DC examples. But when you, you don't have to get up very high in frequency at all before the, the, the easiest path of transmission of energy is going to be in the dielectric between the material. And these um, the, the conductors just act as boundaries for the, the, the electromagnetic waves traveling down uh, from source to load. And that's a very interesting concept. Um, to further explain that, let me pause and then scroll down and draw an example. Here I've tried to draw an electromagnetic wave, an electric field in fact in this case, propagating down uh, a metal air boundary. So this side, side here is metal, down here this is air, and here's the boundary. Here's the electric field traveling in air, and you have a, a positive going signal here, uh, there's a null, and then it reverses polarity and comes back the other direction. In the metal there is a surface wave of electrons sloshing around, and, and these, these are electrons sloshing around responding to these electric fields, and this creates I squared R heating, uh, heat dissipation, energy dissipation, uh, but maybe no net movement of electrons back and forth. This is an AC signal slot coming back and forth along the wire. These uh, sloshing electrons will penetrate into the metal. That wave, surface wave will penetrate into the metal uh, to approximately the skin depth, which is defined here. I'm not going to go into that, but it's just 1 over E attenuation inside the material. Now, I'm going to write out some uh, properties that I found in some books and around the web and show you, try to show you that the energy is in fact traveling primarily in the air or the rather the dielectric between the material. Here's the part where it gets really interesting. So let's consider uh, not a DC case but almost a DC case uh, of a 20 hertz electromagnetic wave. How fast does that 20 hertz electromagnetic wave travel in air? Well the answer is just the speed of light in air. Three times 10 to the 8th meters per second. How fast does that electromagnetic wave travel in the surface wave of the metal? So this, this part here. Well, it travels fast and almost the speed of light, but not quite. So it's going to be less than 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, and third, let's look at the 20 hertz electromagnetic wave in the bulk wave section of the metal. So beyond the skin depth, so somewhere down here. How fast does that wave travel. It travels at a measly 2 meters per second. Very slow. And finally, how fast does an electron drift? And, and this will depend on the metal properties, of course, and the electric field applied and whatnot. So this is just an approximate number. But you get orders of magnitude here, and it, I found, will travel at 2 meters per second. If you're waiting for the electrons to drift along with the electric field all the way down to your load, you are going to be waiting a very, very long time. And we know, in fact, that doesn't happen. We know that signals travel at the speed of light of the dielectric material um, on their way down to the load. They don't travel less than the speed of light, they travel at the speed of light. So it is, in fact, not electrons that are carrying the signal from source to load. It is, in fact, the electro traveling electromagnetic wave between the conductors, the, the, the one that it's traveling in the dielectric material. Typically, unless you're at DC, energy does not travel as water travels in a pipe. It travels not that way, not the way you've learned in your basic circuits course. It travels in the dielectric between the conductors. As the wave travels along, there will be loss of energy. There will be ohmic loss from this I squared R heating inside the conductor because some of the energy does get transmitted into the metal uh, and so there will be dielectric loss especially at higher frequencies. This, this dielectric up here is possibly not 
lossless, in fact, it's probably not lossless, so there will be some dielectric losses up there that will become more and more important at higher frequencies. Actually, I'm going to pause and scroll down and draw out the main lesson I want you to take away from this. For any frequency higher than DC conditions, energy is not, not, not transmitted by electrons as moving as water moves through a pipe. Rather, it travels in the dielectric material between the conductors at the speed of light. Pause and think about that for a second. and I, I, I think that's pretty mind-blowing. Now, what if you had a transmission line and you didn't know anything about it? You just know you have a transmission line and you want to know some of the characteristics. Well, you can use an instrument called a time delay reflectometer. And there are special instruments for this, or um, sometimes you can get an attachment for your oscilloscope, because basically all this is is an oscilloscope and a step generator. You send a step, uh, like a, some sort of low to high transition into the system, or the reverse of that. Um, and this is voltage, voltage, and this is time. And then you look on the oscilloscope screen for what comes back. And from what comes back, you can determine some characteristics of the transmission line. Uh, one thing you can get is the speed of light in the dielectric, because for any, if the transmission line is matched very well, you're not going to see any reflections off the, the source, uh, off the load end. But if it's not matched, then uh, what you'll see is uh, a time delay between when you send in the signal, which may be here, and when you get back your first something or other. And there's a delta t associated with that, a delta time. And so the velocity of uh, speed of light in the dielectric material, whatever it is, is two times the length of your transmission line times delta t. Two times the length because it has to go all the way down, and then it has to come all the way back. Uh, from the speed of light, you can possibly back out the dielectric constant of your material. And that's going to be 1 over mu times the velocity squared. And mu is probably about 1. It's 1 for most materials, or very close to 1. Um, and if you have mismatches in the impedance, um, which will allow you to see these, you can also gather some information about the characteristic impedance of the lines. Okay, let me close with a statement about um, waveguides, antennas, and transmission lines, and how they all relate. So what is a waveguide? You've heard of that, probably. And what you can look at it as is a special case of transmission lines. So you have transmission lines and a special case of it, special case, is a, a waveguide. Let me step back. Broadly, there are only three ways to transmit uh, electromagnetic sim uh, signals from source to load. You can either use a transmission line, you can use a waveguide, which as I mentioned is a special case of transmission line, or you can use an antenna, where you're transmitting through free space, maybe in the near field, probably more likely in the far field. So let me, let's me let compare uh, just the, the transmission line and waveguide. So here I'm going to make transmission line, waveguide. And I'm going to draw out some categories here. So let's say DC conduction. Can they conduct at DC? The frequency range where they matter. EM coupling, coupling and whether it's made of a metal or not. Metal. There we go. Let me just fill this in real quick. So DC conduction for a transmission line, can it accommodate DC conduction? Yes, because it's a pair of metal lines with a dielectric between them. So you could send a signal in here, I, and then receive it back here, I, and the electrons can actually move in that system. A waveguide is different. Generally speaking, I guess you could transmit signals uh, according to a waveguide with um, uh, metal um, terminations, but usually it's, it's some sort of dielectric and you're using some sort of uh, dielectric constant difference. So no, it's not conductive. This would be some sort of like glass or I don't know, some other kind of material. What frequency ranges are we use for each case? Well, for a transmission line, it's DC up to high frequencies. And for waveguides, it's very high frequencies where, in fact, the light, uh, the, the light, the electromagnetic energy, which is light, is um, bouncing back and forth along the waveguide on its way down to the, to the load. And there will be many, many, many reflections, in, internal reflections. You may hear total internal reflection. This is where that matters. So maybe you have 
air out here and this is glass and uh, index of refraction and which is just another way of saying that the dielectric constant uh, interacts to keep that light within the glass as it transmits down the line. Electromagnetic coupling, I'm going to say that the transmission line, it's in the near field because uh, back to the case of the transmission line, if this is a metal and this is a metal, this, this metal I'm assuming can interact with this metal through the, the capacitance and so that by definition means that we're in the near field. Um, for the waveguide, it's the far field. And I'm playing a little fast and loose with these definitions here. Uh, if you're curious about near field, far field, watch some of my other videos. Um, it's bouncing back and forth. And so when it's up here, this part back here, you need too many colors. When, when the wave, when this is up here, it has no memory of what happened back here. It doesn't interact with it. It's, it's, um, it's on its way down the line and will just travel according to these reflections. If you altered the potential back here, it would have no effect on this, this part that's continuing to travel down. Let's say at some point in time you're able to clip this off. This guy would still travel down the line quite well, where in the transmission line case it probably would be affected. Um, are they metal? Uh, transmission lines are, yes, always metal, and as I mentioned, waveguides, sometimes, sometimes. You could do it that way. Most often they're not metal, which is why I'm saying they're also not conductive. Hope that was informative, and I'll see you later. Bye.